Hey there everybody, this is the Race Engineer. Welcome to part 4 of the McPherson suspension design. In this video, we are going to model the knuckle arm sub-assembly, which includes the hub carrier, the brake disc, the knuckle arm, and the CV joint with the axle. We begin with the design of the knuckle arm, the black one which you see, with the connections for the tie rod and the one for the lower ball joint. So to begin with we start with the four points that come from the chassis. This point is the center of the wheel, this is for the tie rod, this is the lower ball joint and this is for the upper mount connection to the chassis. We start with as simple as a cylinder near the center of the wheel we make a block around it in a rectangular form we start adding the connection for the lower ball joint by making an inclination and this is just an extrude the next we make the connection for the two balls that go across uh, the damper assembly the next thing we do is uh, add the linkage where the tie rod will be connected make a few aesthetic changes add the hole for the ball joint which is indeed a tapered hole we slightly reduce this add some more changes up and down according to the space constraints we add a bunch of fillets on the sharp corners then add another cut extrude from the top to make it lighter we add the fillets to the sharp edges of the cut extrude we just made then we add the hole for the connection for the tie rod the bolt that crosses it and bolts onto it and that's all for the knuckle arm we then go back and check on the brake disc the brake disc is basically simple circular patterns. You start off with the disc and then add the internal flow channels. Make a circular pattern, then add another disc to close this channel. We then cut extrude a big hole in the middle. We add four different holes for the flow of heat during braking. We then add another section which protrudes from the outer disc but remember there is a slight fillet as you can see in this section if you have a close look around here it is slightly bent this is done purposely to accommodate for any thermal expansion of the discs during braking then we add the holes for the lug bolts that connect to the wheel and the tire itself we make the circular pattern of the holes for the heat exchange we then add another hole this is for a screw that connects to the hub because otherwise it will move and rotate so that's all for the brake disc the next part is the hub carrier the hub carrier contains the ball bearing on which the wheel rotates this is a simple extrude feature with discs and holes we begin with a cylinder then add another disc make a hole to it make the holes for the lug bolts that go onto the wheel as we did for the brake disc then add another extrusion we add the fifth hole that connects to the brake disc to stop it from rotating when the lug bolts are off then finally the outer cylinder and make it a chamfer just like that. That's all for the hub carrier. The final part of the CV joint is basically something I acquired from GrabCAD. It's the design is Paul. I hope you give him credit for his design and it was enough for me to use in my design and uh, let's have a look. Just contains uh, the axle with the splines and this part of the boot is uh, what I have designed so 
to check on the boot. The boot is basically a revolve feature which contains a section like this. Using a spline curve you can uh, make this a revolve feature just like a rubber boot around the axles. If you remove this part we see the inside of the CV joint which contains the balls for the bearing. Uh, this shaft is what goes to the transaxle which uh, is the drive shaft for a front wheel drive car. Having a look at it is just a shaft with splines. The section for splines is something like this. You can make a circular pattern in 2D with any profile, teeth profile for splines. Having a look at the CV joint by Paul on GrabCAD. We can see the internal balls of the ball bearing and the outer shaft. This is the shaft that is splined onto the inner star patterned metal object that revolves around the ball bearing and this shaft rotates around the outer race of the ball bearing. So that's basically it for the entire knuckle assembly. You can actually make a sub assembly and then import it into the main assembly for the entire wheel so in that way you don't have to deal with so many mating assemblies which you mate from the assembly section mate and it is much easier to just uh, modify this sometimes when you import a sub assembly into the main assembly you might not be able to rotate them according to the mating constraints that you put inside the sub assembly the way you allow it to move also in the assembly is by making it flexible. You go onto the sub assembly of your choice, right click and go to this icon that says make sub assembly flexible. Otherwise it is just fixed. So that's all for the knuckle and hub assembly. In the next and the final part of this McPherson suspension design, we're gonna be dealing with the sub assembly of the damper itself. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day.